What's going on, Garage Gang? Matt from Garage MC here. Guys, welcome to 2024. Today is January 1st. <sighs> we're going to be doing some different things with the channel this year, man. We're going to be adding a few things. Uh, this is going to be video one of a new series that I'm going to start. It's going to be called The Simple Series. Um, this is more geared towards the novice quad owner, um, first time quad owner, the younger viewer that might not know what they're doing yet. Um, I know a lot of you guys that watch my channel, you guys do a lot of your own work, you already know what you're doing. Um, this could just be for entertainment for you, or if you want, if there's tips that you also use that could help somebody else out, go ahead and drop them down in the comments, man. You know, I read and answer every single one of my comments, guys. Uh, I'm going to stop saying that because you should probably already know that, but Anyway, in today's video, guys, we're going to do something real simple, hence the Simple Series series name. Um, we're going to do new brake pads on the TRX 400EX in the background here. Real quick, guys, brief intermission. Some of you guys might not know this, but I had stickers made, and they're flying off the shelf. If you want one, go down in the comments, and I'll tell you how you guys can get one. Here's what they look like. Bang! Three inch in diameter, guys. Uh, they're about half gone, but on top of that half being gone, 200 of these are getting put to the side. Why, you ask? Because this TRX 465EX that you guys have been watching me build is going to get waffled, waffled off. So, drop a comment, man. I need to know. Are you guys going to be in on the giveaway on this? Let me know. Alright, let's get back to the video. So changing your brake pads on your 400EX or 9.9 .9 out of 10 quads that you're going to work on, this is going to be the same exact procedure. It's usually two pins that go through the caliper. Um, reasons that you're going to want to change your brake pads, man, and another reason why I'm making this video is you guys know I buy a lot of quads. I part out a lot of quads. I build a lot of quads. Well, I try to build a lot of quads. Um, almost... Almost all of them that I get that come through here that I take apart or, or repair and then sell, the, the brake pads are damn near down to the metal plate, if not already ground into the metal plate. Reasons that's not good, guys. Um, obviously, brakes, you get a lot of friction, all right? So if you go running through all your pad, one, you're not going to have the stopping power that you're supposed to. Two, you're going to introduce so much heat that you're going to end up just destroying the caliper um, I don't know if you guys have been in the market for used ATV parts or um, new parts. It, you know, even if you want to go OEM, if you go to like some Chinese knockoff stuff, yeah, it's cheap. Um, but you get what you pay for. OEM caliper, I mean, even for 400EX guys, go on eBay and type in used TRX 400EX brake caliper. You, you might be a little shocked at the prices that you find um, for a caliper that most people upgrade anyway. Um... Yeah, it's just, you know, uh, upgrade your brakes, man. Do your basic maintenance, guys. It's not that hard to do. Parts are cheap uh, to maintain your stuff anyway. So in this video, guys, we're going to do the rear brake caliper. It's going to be the same for all three brake calipers, at least stock ones on a TRX 400EX. Um, it's a single piston caliper. Show it to you now. So we got this one here. Yes, it's on the 465. Um, you know, trying to... Trying to help out some other people that might not know what they're doing, guys. We're going to go to EBC Red Stuff Pads. Uh, here's the caliper here. So I'll give you guys a quick rundown, and then we'll get into taking this thing apart and switching the brake pads out. I saw a little rundown on how to uh, replace your brake pads. So your caliper here. Obviously, normally you'd have your brake line going to it. Mine's not hooked up yet. Um, I had to order a longer brake line. This is for a standard size swing arm. So, you know, this is a plus two swing arm. So we're, I don't know, two inches short. So anyway, you have two bolts down here that hold the caliper, this part of the caliper here to the brake caliper stay. This is the brake caliper bracket. This is your brake caliper. This is your block off plate. This is your bleeder valve. This is the banjo bolt where your brake line goes to. This is your uh, locator pin. This is what your brake caliper slides on when you um, clamp down on it. So to uh, change your brake pads, these two uh, bolts here, guys, these are 10 millimeter. And you see this little plate that's behind it here? This is when you tighten it, you bend down one of these tabs so these bolts cannot back out. 
you definitely want to put this back on. I know it's not the prettiest looking thing in the world on there, neither are these bolts, but um, other style brake calipers, like, um, like on my 250R for instance, these pins are hidden inside of the caliper, and then there's like a little, uh, like a little, a little cap that blocks them off to keep the, the threads and stuff clean. These on a 400EX are just exposed, but it's the same exact basic principle of what we're doing here now anyway. Um, so you could leave your brake line still attached with your brake fluid. You don't have to re-bleed your brakes or anything like that. Um, I mean, if you have a brake caliper that somebody wore the brake pads all the way down to the damn metal plate, you're probably going to want to go ahead and do a brake fluid flush anyway. We'll get into bleeding and flushing brakes in another video coming up soon. So be on the lookout for that. Um, so these bolts here, guys, I'll loosen the top one and we'll take the bottom one out and then we could take our caliper and flip it up. Um, but before we do that, you're going to want to go ahead and break these bolts free, guys, uh, while it's held to the quad. These could be a nightmare. Sometimes they get seized in there. So, all right, I'm going to get you guys set up on the tripod. Uh, actually, before we do that, uh, I started telling you guys about, you know, the, the problems you could have if you run down to the metal. You're going to get a lot of heat from all the friction. Um, you could possibly overheat and ruin the seals that go around the piston that's inside the caliper. That's what uh, makes your quad stop when you press on the brake pedal. It introduces uh, pressure to the brake fluid system. Brake fluid does not compress, so therefore it pushes the piston that's in here in which then squeezes the brake pads together. So if you're down to the metal and you're getting way too much heat, you'll warp your rotor, um, you'll have no brakes, really. I mean, I mean, you still will, it'll still stop, but it's gonna be an excruciating sound coming from the rear end of your quad. And like I said, you're just gonna wear everything out and cost yourself more money in the long run. The first step here, I'm gonna bend these tabs out of the way and then we're gonna back these two 10 millimeter uh, lock locating pins out. I think they're called locating pin or uh, brake pins. So you don't want to take them all the way out yet. You can um, pull these out. The brake pads are gonna fall out when we flip this up. Uh, you know, it gets us the same result anyway. But whatever. All right, so we'll leave those where they're at now. Then over here on the other side, went ahead and broke this free. Um, on this quad here, guys, I upgraded to uh, stainless steel Allen head bolts everywhere, so these are 6 millimeter. Normally, they would be a 12 or a 14. Um, I can't remember exactly off the top of my head. I'm pretty sure they're a 12 stock, so you could pretty much do this whole brake pad upgrade with a 10 millimeter and a 12 or a 14 millimeter with a ratchet. Um, you could do it with a wrench, too. All right, so to get that bottom one out, we can go ahead and flip our brake caliper up. We can go ahead and take our two pins out if you guys can see and you guys can see how these are these are nice and corroded and covered in brake dust and rust we're gonna I'm gonna go ahead and clean these up before we put them back in all right so we got both of those out there's our little plate that locks the two pins so they can't back out and then voila look at that see this one was just about wasn't these aren't the worst ones I've seen come in here believe it or not but uh all right we'll go ahead and throw these right in the trash so our pins that came out of there you can see how they look here this is uh I didn't touch this one yet this is just like not even 15 seconds on a scotch bright wheel um you don't want to clean those up if you don't have a bench grinder with a scotch bright pad use a brillo pad clean them up sandpaper whatever you want to do um be careful though, if you uh, use a scotch Brite pad, don't take the coating off the head of the bolt because they are zinc coated, and if you do that, it will rust. In the interest of keeping my uh, camera clean, um, these pins, before you put them in, guys, usually what I'll do is I'll put a little bit of grease, just a small film, on these uh, pins here. Here's a little view for you so you can see what these look like and how they catch the brake pads in there. Once these are in the holes here and you can see the corresponding holes that they uh, slide into inside the caliper one for each pin so when you put these in if I can get them in so you'll see how they go into those holes there that's all that holds your brake pads on so obviously with the pad the uh, pins in 
or out. I'm sorry, I can't talk today, guys. I don't know what it is, man. I turn the camera on, stumbling on my words. So we'll go ahead and slide these out a little bit. Take our pads, drop these in. And you want to make sure your uh, brake pad um, bracket is in there, too. Um, that, that piece does come out. Yes, you do need it in there. So we'll drop these in. Um, if your quad, if you're doing this still on the quad, uh, you're going to want to go ahead and take the uh, piston, this part here, this round part that's in there. That's what pushes on the brake pad, like I said before. You're going to want to uh, compress that all the way back into the caliper. This way your pads are open enough to fit the rotor in between them. So, it's a little fiddly, but you just line up your pin. I think you guys can kind of see in there a little bit. Just want to line up these pins through both holes on both pads. If it will allow me, I said get in there. There we go. All right, so we're, we are through both brake pads, and then we can just push our pin in the rest of the way and start threading it in. And then when you get these bottomed out, you don't have to go crank on them all crazy, all right? You don't need a crazy amount of torque on this. This is what these little tabs are for. That's why when we get it seated all the way down, bend those down, and it keeps the bolt from backing out. So these are just pins, that's all they are. You don't need to go nuts with, with like 40 pounds of torque. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and put this back on the bike now. Well, same exact procedure of how we took it off, guys. Get your, I usually get the top one done first, uh, if you even took this out. Um, I only took mine off basically just to give you a little better view of what was going on. I don't tighten it down yet. And we'll get our pads separated, which I didn't do enough of. Uh, being that we have our brake pads slid apart wide enough, we go ahead and slide this down on the rotor. Same way we took it off. Guess I didn't push that piston in enough, huh? All right. And we'll just replace all of our bolts where they came out of. You're gonna wanna refer to your service manual if you're worried about your torque specs on these two bolts here. And tighten everything down. All right, guys, so if you uh, just replaced the pads and you didn't um, drain your brake fluid or anything like that, take the pressure out of it, um, but you did squeeze the uh, brake caliper piston in, obviously to fit the rotor in between the new pads, before you go ride, you're going to want to pump your brakes because when you open that up, say if you just did this and you went out and went to go ride and something happened you had to jump on the rear brakes real quick the first time you pump it it's just gonna push them closer together then you'll have brakes so definitely pump your brakes and make sure you're good to go every few rides you're gonna want to you know just go over your bike guys uh stuff happens out there man you know bolts come loose uh things get out of spec you always want to do your basic maintenance man just be careful out there riding um thank you guys for checking out our new simple series and uh we'll see you guys in the next video Thanks for joining me in the garage.